Traveling is an art form when you're the Russian president and worth more than $200 billion. It's more than the normal logistical nightmare. When Vladimir Putin travels, it's a genuine display of how luxury can meet security. Security when traveling within Moscow. With the current geopolitical situation, President Putin rarely travels outside Moscow. However, the FSO, tasked with President Putin's security, doesn't take too many chances. After all, Moscow is usually a bustling city with gridlocks and a lot of heavy traffic. So, the FSO decided to go around this minor inconvenience and just give the Russian president a private road from his Novo Agayovo estate located on the outskirts of the Russian capital to the Kremlin, which is in Moscow's center. Of course, the private road is closed to all traffic except for the president's, and even high officials are not allowed to use it. So, this $60 million six-lane road is entirely dedicated to Vladimir Putin's commute to work. And you can be sure the president is not cycling to work. Usually, he's accompanied by at least a dozen other vehicles and a police escort. When going outside this road, the president is led by one truly inspiring motorcade that's more formidable than the Victory Day Parade. The motorcade comprises at least 20 vehicles, among which are six armored SUVs filled with two teams of the Russian Special Forces. They are armed to the teeth with Dragonov sniper rifles, AK-47s, anti-tank grenade launchers, portable air defense systems, and probably an ICBM or two, just in case. In case of an attack, the first team's job is to eliminate the threat, while the second one is to escort the president outside of harm's way. The central piece of this spectacle is the presidential limousine. The car is truly a masterpiece of luxury and security. Presidential Limousine In 2017, Vladimir Putin was in the middle of exchanging all Western goods and services with equally reliable Russian-made brands. So, he had to trade his precious, luxurious Mercedes-Benz S600 Guard Pullman for a Russian-made ultra-luxurious limousine. The honor went to the renowned Russian limousine manufacturer, Aurus. The brand was well known as the provider of most USSR dictators' limos before 1990. In a testament to the challenging times, Putin spared no expense, investing a staggering sum of nearly $200 million to transform his new Aura Senate into an impregnable fortress on wheels. Although the car's base price was only $300,000, its value skyrocketed because of all the defensive and offensive features added to it. The car was built to be like a moving fortress, following strict guidelines from the FSO. Thus, once done, the vehicle was heavily armored and could withstand any caliber bullets, sniper fire, landmine explosions, chemical gas attacks, and even small-scale missile attacks. To make this bunker on four wheels into a comfortable command center for Vladimir Putin, it has one truly luxurious interior with leather seatings, polished finishes, and an array of features like a private minibar. To top it all off, the Aura Senat is equipped with advanced communication equipment, turning it into a mobile command center. Even with its windows covered, a high-tech CCTV system provides a complete view of the surroundings. For extra safety, there's a secret emergency exit at the back of the car, which can be used for a quick escape if needed. Eat your hat, James Bond. Putin's Aura Senat is more than a luxurious limousine or a bunker on wheels. It's a statement. It represents the president's authority and determination to be protected at all costs. Still, you don't think that's the only car in good old Vlad's garage now, do you? Car Collection 
Putin is well known for his love of luxurious cars. Still, as most are Western-made, he prefers to keep them hidden from the general public. So, along with the breathtaking Aura Senat, the Russian president has several other Soviet relics in his garage. One notable car is a Ukrainian-built Tsars, rumored to have been Vladimir's first car. Due to its sentimental value, Putin invested $10,000 in finding a mint-condition Tsars. Another interesting car in his collection is a Gaz Volga, which used to be considered a high-class car in the Soviet Union. This vehicle gained fame when Putin drove former US President George Bush in it back in 2006. However, among all his cars, Putin's absolute favorite is his Lada Neva 4x4. This rugged and reliable off-road vehicle cost him around $15,000 and holds a special place in his heart. These cars have no special security features, but the president uses them predominantly on private properties and as a reminder of his past. Still, he does go to fight bears high up in the mountains with his Lada Neva every Thursday afternoon. Or does he? Traveling in Moscow is easy, since, usually, the president uses his private road, or the local police cut off the traffic wherever the impressive presidential motorcade has to go. When traveling to other parts of Russia, however, this task becomes a bit harder. Security Measures When Traveling Within Russia when traveling within Russia, the task of the FSO and especially Putin's personal guards of SBP becomes a lot more interesting. Usually, the SBP chooses the precise route and method of transportation that will make for the safest travel. On the spot, days in advance, police and local FSO operatives start the preparations. The police become much more vigilant, and any notions of protest are abruptly snuffed out. Moreover, the FSO installs operatives in local pubs and joints to gather information if any malicious acts are in motion. On the day of Putin's visit, the security measures are simply draconian. There are dozens of snipers on the rooftops, ready to put down any attempt at the president's life. Moreover, operatives in plain clothes are spread around the city, especially in the crowd that will inevitably gather to welcome Putin. Finally, residents are forbidden from looking out the windows whenever the president is within eyesight. In addition, any clothes drying on the balconies are also a huge no-no, as they could be used as hiding spots for terrorists. There are rare unscripted interactions with the president, usually when he meets the so-called locals. Those are activists from his party or undercover SBP operatives. I wouldn't be surprised if the babies he kisses are also SBP officers. For example, during a visit of Turkish President Erdogan to Russia, Putin famously shared a pistachio ice cream cone with his Turkish colleague from a seemingly ordinary ice cream booth. This might fool some people, but when you know how seriously both Putin and Erdogan take their security, this was, without a doubt, an SBP agent who gave the two leaders a pre-approved and thoroughly checked ice cream. As proof, several months later, the same ice cream girl was noticed at another one of Putin's rallies several thousand miles away. Of course, these measures are not strictly unique to the Russian president. Most world leaders script their visits so they can be sheltered from the unadulterated opinion of the masses. It is as much security for their ego as it is for their well-being. What makes Putin unique, however, is his travel methods. Private Train There is no safer way to travel than by train. It's not surprising that Kim Jong-un, the leader with the most targets on his back, predominantly uses this method of transportation within his country. I guess Vladimir Putin took a page from his colleague's book and also decided to use the good old-fashioned train to travel across Russia. Or he just reminisces about Russian literature, where the stories predominantly take place on trains. Jokes aside, Putin switched his usual methods of traveling due to security reasons. Thus now, he opts for a highly armored train that's practically indistinguishable from a regular passenger train. From the outside. From the inside, this train is highly luxurious and has some outstanding amenities most private jets don't have. The train boasts some reinforced axles, along with a more powerful locomotive. 
Along with the bulletproof exterior, the train has a radio jammer, which aims to disrupt bomb activation signals as well as communications within a certain perimeter. The train consists of a presidential car, which includes a bedroom and a study for meetings, a car for Putin's entourage, and a dedicated special communications car. The train's schedule is carefully tailored to ensure maximum speed and minimize unwanted stops. Luxury is also a prominent feature of Putin's private train. The presidential car provides a comfortable and opulent space for the Russian leader. Its interior is lavishly furnished, allowing Putin to conduct meetings and rest during his journeys. The train's design and amenities are tailored to meet the needs and preferences of the president, reflecting his status and influence. The estimated cost of Putin's armored train is around 1 billion rubles or 12.7 million dollars. In addition to the train itself, exclusive railway tracks and stations have been built near Putin's known residences. These stations are equipped with advanced security measures, including surveillance cameras and fencing. They ensure a seamless and secure journey for the Russian president, providing him with a high level of privacy and protection. Still, traveling by train can be time-consuming, and when you're at war, you often have to get from place to place ASAP. That's where Putin's favorite chopper comes in handy. Private Choppers Russia's answer to Marine One, the iconic helicopter used by the United States President, comes in the form of an upgraded version of the renowned Russian rotary wing workhorse, the MI-8 HIP. Produced by the Mill Helicopter Plant, the MI-8 and its more menacing counterpart, the MI-24 Hind, became synonymous of the Cold War with their distinctive shapes. Despite their introduction many decades ago, these reliable and relatively simple machines are still manufactured in numerous variations for air forces worldwide. Unsurprisingly, this is the chopper of choice for the Russian president when he needs a quick transport from point to point. While Vladimir Putin continues to favor the tried and tested MI-8 for his point-to-point -point transportation needs, including his daily commute, it is important to note that he is far from roughing it during these journeys. The MI-8 MTV, configured for very, very important person use, can be distinguished by its square windows, as opposed to the traditional round windows, and is typically equipped with external fuel tanks, additional auxiliary power units, antenna farms, and infrared countermeasures. These countermeasures currently include infrared flares, but may also feature a directed laser countermeasure system, like the domestically produced President S. The MI-8 MTV features spacious club chairs, high-quality wooden trims, extra sofa seating, a restroom, and in-flight communication and video systems. In addition, the rear clamshell doors, a prominent feature of the chopper, are retained, allowing cargo or luggage to be loaded into the rear compartment through these doors without disturbing those already seated inside or boarding the forward salon cabin. Yes, Putin definitely doesn't hold back on luxury when traveling within Russia. Still, compared to what he does when traveling abroad, inner country travels are more like a pesky ride on a public bus. Security Measures When Traveling Abroad Traveling abroad is not something that Putin does a lot these days. However, before the war with Ukraine, the Russian president was most welcome worldwide, and the FSB had a lot of jobs preparing the venue and collaborating with a local police force and secret services. A special SBP team travels two weeks in advance to prepare the city for President Putin's arrival. This includes choosing routes, backup routes, escape routes, and, of course, picking up a five-star hotel for the president and his entourage. Usually, when Putin is in town, the most luxurious hotel is all booked up. So it's not uncommon for luxury hotels to buy out their guests' reservations last minute when the Russian president is set to arrive. After all, he does pay handsomely for luxury and services. The special SBP team checks, secures, and seals the hotel until Putin's arrival. 
After that, the entire hotel staff is given a paid vacation as Putin's own personal servants, cooks, butlers, and guards will take over the whole venue. As a former spy, the Russian president knows the best way to infiltrate a high-profile guest is through the servants. So, usually, the servants rotate depending on the location, except for the cooks. They are specially chosen by Putin himself and are highly trusted individuals. As you can imagine, several nights' stay with such customizations cost the Russian leader millions. But hey, nothing's more precious than the peace of mind that a CIA operative won't poison your food. Speaking of the food, alongside Putin on all his travels, there is a special unit of food tasters. If you imagine they have a bite of Putin's food every time before he eats, as they did in ancient Egypt, you have a lot to learn. Today, food testers are actually scientists who get a piece of the food or drink and analyze it in a mobile laboratory. Only in extreme conditions, which rarely occur, is the food tasted by another person, most often one of Putin's bodyguards. With all this security, one would easily think that Putin's travels are a nightmare. Well, there is a silver lining. Private Jet Traveling with utmost style and luxury is definitely a top priority for the Russian president. That's why he prefers the lavishly decorated Russian Ilyushin Il-96-300PU. Actually, Putin has three of these. And while they were built in the Soviet era, today planes with such features and specifications will go for around $300 million. Still, the Russian leader doesn't fly in the old relics. On the contrary, just a few years ago, he ordered their total renovation and refurbishing, which cost $11 million per plane. While the Il-96 was designed to be an Air Force One equivalent, it does have some ultra-luxurious features that the US president simply can't have on his plane. This includes a lavish master bedroom with a bathroom with golden fixtures. Moreover, as this is Putin's private jet, of course, it's equipped with top-of-the-line fitness, where the Russian president can work on his sexy abs. Moreover, the plane has custom birchwood furniture, complemented by leather seatings and an interior decoration dominated by gold, silver, and other precious materials. As the Il-96 is a flying command center, it has a constant internet connection, 87 satellite phones, and a video conference room. To top it all off, Putin Force One is equipped with high-end military-grade defensive capabilities. Seeing this plane, one would think that Putin's all work and no play. Well, he does have some time off on occasion. During his vacation, the Russian president can choose to relax on one of his four gorgeous yachts. Private Yachts it's no secret that Russian President Putin has a fondness for luxury, especially when it comes to yachts. He owns at least four of them, with his most prized possession being the Graceful, which cost him around $100 million. This extravagant yacht can accommodate up to 14 people in its six spacious and luxurious bedrooms. It even boasts a helipad and multiple lounging areas. Unfortunately, the interior details of the yacht are kept under wraps, as Putin prefers to keep his possessions private. Another yacht in Putin's collection is the Seagull, officially owned by the Russian state. It's a massive 177-foot-long floating palace that serves as a pleasure cruise. Valued at $40 million, it features a grand dining room, a large swimming pool, a jacuzzi, a barbecue area, and a beach club. Of course, Putin wouldn't settle for anything less than a top-of-the-line gym on board. Thankfully, the Seagull doesn't disappoint in that aspect as well. The Olympia is another yacht that Putin owns, and at least he openly acknowledges this one. He received this $35 million yacht as a generous gift from Roman Abramovich, the former president of Chelsea Football Club and a Russian billionaire. Although one might question whether such a valuable gift is a bribe, Putin accepts it graciously. The Olympia is equipped with all the amenities one would expect for a playboy like Abramovich. 
Along with a lavishly decorated office, Putin, being the leader of the largest country in the world, sees his role as a 24-7 job. So, having a well-equipped office on his yacht is essential. Lastly, there is the Rosia. The yacht, on paper, is not something special. But considering Putin invested an astounding $1.5 billion in refurbishing it, one can only wonder what opulence lies behind its closed doors. Unfortunately, the interior and the features of this yacht are kept confidential. Still, it's good to know that the Russian president lives like a king. Speaking of kings, care to learn how the world's richest king lives next?